What's new? Do you have good news today? Well, okay, so I think last time on last show, which was a little ways after Thanksgiving, I was talking about how I've been doing some uh, bit of subcontracting with some of the comp- companies I've been interviewing with. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I've been doing more with that. They haven't hired me or anything. But then again, it's only been just after the new year and stuff. Yeah. It's January 9th right now. Yeah. But hey, works work. It all helps pay the mortgage and such. Groovy. What else is new? Ah, uh, so I went to visit my parents in December. Again. Again. I know. He, he said in mock surprise. Mm-hmm. We knew that. Yep. And this time around, though, my brother uh, wasn't visiting because he and his now wife, Margaret, they're off in, well, they're still in South Africa on their honeymoon. Oh. Yeah. But that meant that they just weren't home to visit with my parents and me. Sure. So, Things mostly went fine, but I noticed sort of a continuing trend from Thanksgiving where when I maybe wasn't in the room or so on, or even when I was in the room, that they would mess up my pronouns um, and just kind of not even just slip up and then correct themselves, but just kind of obliviously mess up, keep going, Mm. neither of them realize kind of thing. Was it just the three of you in the house the whole time? On the Saturday evening, we invited uh, my Aunt Angie over. And so she was. She came for dinner, and she's a super ally, so that was great. Um, and then the previous evening, we went to have dinner with some of the neighbors. So it wasn't always just the three of us, but it was, I guess, much of the time, the three of us. Okay. And that's when these slip-ups would happen? Yeah, like, for instance, I mean, okay, so I've got a, a watch, you know, ordinary watch, but mm-hmm. it's got a teeny tiny little crown on it. And so when it comes time to, for to fix, to change the time, because they're in Eastern time, I'm in Central time. So I asked my dad if he could help me with that. Because I didn't want to mess up. I don't want to chip my nails. Okay. I, he, I asked him to do that. And he, he said, oh, sure. And he pulled it out and I fixed it and everything. And then uh, my mom walked in and dad was saying, oh, uh, I just helped him pull out the crown on his watch. Uh, since he didn't want to chip his painted nails. And did your father narrate your life? I don't understand why he felt the need to even say that out loud. Uh, Because I think maybe my dad was still like holding my watch at the time. And maybe she was just wondering what's up. Okay. But but the thing that was odd, though, is because the whole context of helping me with the crown of my watch was so that I wouldn't chip my nails, which he said as much. Right. And he still messed up my pronouns. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So that was, I mean, that was kind of disappointing. Um, So when my dad said, I said, uh, no, she, her watch. Mm -hmm. And my dad sort of went, he's like, oh, right. As if, I don't know, it's as if it was some kind of uh, like game I was playing with him. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not unlike the way if, um, someone corrects someone else's grammar and the other person doesn't care. Yeah. So that was, it was kind of disappointing. Um, I I mean, not to mention that my mom, of course, I mean, neither of them said anything when my dad just breezed right through that. One of the other evenings after dinner, um, my parents were tidying up a bit after dinner and I was in the other room and I could hear my dad say, uh, well, why don't you leave out the pie in case he might like to snack, have a snack later? and I think I, I sort of like gently yelled from the other room, like, no, sh- no, she. I mean, they were clearly just talking like themselves. It wasn't like they meant for me to hear them. Right. What kind of pie? This is uh, one of my favorite pies. It's a pumpkin apple pie. Okay. Is this something that you would have trouble getting from out of the fridge? Well, my parents, they actually just recently redid their kitchen. Oh. So, I mean, and it looks very pretty, but everything's in a different spot now. So maybe I just, like, if they put it in the cupboard or wherever pies go, they go in maybe the I fridge. wouldn't be able to find it. <laughs> they go in the, the fridge, fridge or on the yeah. counter, or if you're old-timey on a windowsill where yeah, that's true. nearby hobo will steal it from. But then the thing that kind of pulled all this together for me a bit was... um. I mentioned about how one of the evenings when my Aunt Angie 
we had her over for dinner and uh we uh had a few drinks in the living room before dinner and then uh there's a moment where my mom and dad went to the kitchen to kind of do some dinner prep stuff so it was just me and angie in the mm -hmm. living room and we had a chance to chat for a bit and, you know it's always just usual small talk things but at one point angie asked me uh so how's your visit been going with your parents and i said uh well they haven't used my birth name even once um for, for one thing okay which is true and uh and angie said well uh yeah I, I don't think i've heard them use your old name in about a year so that was that was a good thing because yeah, it's a long time yeah yeah although they seem to just rely on snooks a lot of the time so or or my eldest right <laughs> oh my gosh yes yes that too yes yeah so so then i mentioned to angie uh but there have been a few times where I've noticed them using male pronouns when they thought I was out of earshot. Mm. And that was when Angie said to me, um, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure they're using your pronouns when you're not around. Confirming what you said? Yeah, it was mm. something I had a hunch about, but to hear it from another source, I mean, that said something. Although they do when they're talking with your brother. And, and sometimes they do when they're just talking face to face with me. But I, I think they, I don't know, let their guard down for lack of a better word when they're not being reminded of the conversation and who they need to mm. use pronouns for. Because if it's, if they're just on the phone with my brother or something like that, they're probably very conscious of who they're speaking with and the, the context and so on. Okay. Or, or when I'm uh, talking with them directly, Kate, maybe just by looking at me they might be reminded but like the time with the crown on my watch i mean i was in the room at the time yeah but my dad was talking to my mom so it's almost i almost wonder if maybe in the sense of my parents talking to each other perhaps they're just accustomed to using male pronouns but did angie imply that they use male pronouns when they're talking with her um, she didn't come out and say that. Um, or was she just sympathizing, maybe? I hadn't mentioned this theory that maybe they weren't using my pronouns while someone wasn't around. And she just brought it up on her own. So oh, okay. I'm I heard guessing you that maybe there have been enough times where they've slipped up around her, perhaps all the time. Mm. And I, I know that Angie's a good enough ally that she would correct them. But having said that, Maybe it's something that she's just making, taking note of, no, no say. What did you say when she said that to you? Well, I think he said, I've been thinking maybe that was the case too. Yeah. And, but, but I don't know what to do for, about that. Like with the pie thing, uh, I think I, I sort of said, hey, no, she, I mean, when I was from, when I was in the other room. It seems to have no effect whatsoever. Right. I don't right. know if they are audible learners. <laughs> uh, it just seems like they don't care. I don't know. Maybe go to a joke shop to get a can of something that smells really bad and spray it and spray it near them <laughs> when they do it. And it, it would be one thing if they were trying at least a bit when I was out of earshot or if they would correct themselves or something, but... It almost seems like they're humoring me or putting on airs, like they're putting on this act when I'm around and then mm -hmm. when I'm gone, okay, now the mice will play. Mm -hmm. Do you still see a therapist? Yeah, yeah. I still Have see you... my gender therapist, Felicia. Um, you talked with her about this? I last talked with her uh, a couple of weeks ago and... Um, I go to a group session with uh, with Felicia and a couple of other trans women, and um, and a couple of people brought up perhaps I should try to talk to my parents about it, and I I can't say I wouldn't like to, but it seems like when I bring this sort of thing up, that they just kind of change the subject or tune out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the people in the group said that well, what if you were to ask them, hey. Is there something about this process that you feel uncomfortable with or just to 
That's nice and diplomatic. Yeah, to try to be, try to approach it diplomatically and, and so on. But I could I could imagine them just saying, "Oh, it's it's okay," or something. What do you, what do you mean it's okay? Well, I remember at one point, I think it was my dad. I think I, I asked him, uh, I, I would like you to uh, consider being more open-minded and, and tolerant about this sort of thing. And I think my dad said, well, we are tolerant of it. We're just not accepting of it. Uh, as, if, uh, as if they meant in the literal sense of, well, we tolerate this, but we're not, we're not good with it. How long ago did he express that sentiment? I think that may have been last Thanksgiving, or mm. or perhaps even a little earlier. 2013. Right, right. Okay. So it wasn't necessarily a recent thing, but it wouldn't surprise me if, even if, I mean, there, there does seem to be some improvements since then, but there might still be, I mean, since at the time when he said that, I don't think he'd ever called me by my name. But have the people have you heard any stories from people in your group therapy that are similar? People having uh, people that are very close to them being resistant to this particular pronoun change. Most people in my group have had accepting parents and mm -hmm. so on, or um, there been a couple of cases where they told their spouse and they end up getting divorced. Mm -hmm. But they're. It seemed to be generally a case of either they were being accepted or it was someone who wasn't really in their life in the long term, as opposed to this situation where... Your parents are not... trying to have it both ways. They want you to be around, but on their terms. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's totally it. Yeah. Which is unfair to do to another adult. Right. And I could I could imagine saying something like, um, I feel uncomfortable when you use male pronouns even when i'm not around and i could tell my dad saying so like well what do you care if you're not around anyway mm -hmm. as if the only thing that mattered was uh appearances right on on one hand when i notice him doing this which happens not not too infrequently i mean it tells me that they haven't fully accepted me sure and the other thing, of course, is that when perhaps they talk with family, friends, that that sort of thing, perhaps they're outing me with, with that. Mm -hmm. How often does this situation upset you? It upsets me when I'm visiting them and when they use the wrong pronouns. Mm -hmm. And it kind of makes me sad when if I get to thinking about it. And How often does that happen? Like maybe once a week or something. Because hmm. a lot of time I'm just dealing with, I don't know, doing laundry and yeah. buying groceries and all that stuff. So if it's once a week or so, mm -hmm. does it make you like super, super sad where you want to not get up and you just want to uh, smush your face into a pillow and be mad about shit for hours? Or is it more of a passing thought? It's more of a background frustration or something mm. like like if you've mostly completed a crossword puzzle and there are like two rows that you need to get and you're like and you're just kind of thinking about the clues like what could it be how could i how could i fix this oh. so it's kind of thing where my brain wants to fix it i mean and i, I want to fix it but it's something where i don't know how to do that it's entirely not up to you anymore yeah, I mean, that might Which be the sucks. case. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unless you want to, to think about like, and talk to somebody smarter than me about the different ways people can learn to change a thing, but your parents are super stubborn. Yeah, they are. And they think yeah. they have a prerogative or a priority or some kind of right over how they treat you because they gave birth to you. But that stopped when you turned 18, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, that's all true. I think, and also, they probably just have a uh, preconception of, of some sort or another. Or of... Do you think they have a preconception that extends out to other transgender people, where they wouldn't? That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 
it's possible, for instance, that maybe they don't really accept me as female. But is it bec just because you are, are, are a trans female or because you are their child? Probably for all trans people. Yeah. I mean, if my parents were to come visit for a weekend, which I don't know if that's really going to happen super soon, but if they were to do that, I mean, there have been past times when they would visit when I would have a couple of friends over one of the nights for dinner. Um, Cause that way my parents can meet some of my friends and have some fun conversation, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But if, if that were to happen, I don't know that I would, that I could in good conscience invite trans friends to dinner because I could say something like, um, Oh, this is my friend so-and-so and I met her through this event or something like that just as a way of giving them a heads up about pronouns or whatever. And I could, I could just imagine them messing up the pronouns of my friends. Well, what if you introduce somebody without any heads upping or, or backstory and say, this is my friend, Julia. I mean, that's true. Um, at, at the same time, some of my friends are more femme than others. Some of them, I mean, some of them, for example, um, have a, a speaking tone that is similar to their old speaking tone. Mm -hmm. And so um, some people might not perceive that as a feminine voice. And so my parents might assume that so-and-so was, was he rather than she, which of course be wrong. It's all hypothetical for me because it, it's a rare occurrence. But right. if I were introduced to somebody, no matter how feminine they appeared if you said this is julia i wouldn't ever think <laughs> it was a guy right right but what if it was julio on the other hand <laughs> or what if it was a name like hypothetically jordan or something or mm. tracy something mm -hmm. that could be one gender or another yeah or i mean some names that might be mostly one gender but Occasionally, then I might, uh, yeah, then I might get a little more shallow. I might start looking for uh, the shape of uh, of their shoes, maybe, or the cut of their yeah. jeans. And I mean, you're doing all good things. I mean, because trans people, by and large, I mean, there's some people who are sort of androgynous. They choose to go that way, and that's fine. But a lot of trans people, just like any other woman or trans men who dress like any other man, I mean... And just like you were saying about the type of shoes they have, the cut of their top, maybe if they have earrings or whatever, it's something that a lot of time it's not rocket science. But my parents, nonetheless, may look to um, their assigned gender at birth as being like their overriding gender or yeah. some nonsense. Sure. Which they, which sort of seems to be what they do in my case. So to back up a little bit, it sounds like you wouldn't want to invite some of your uh, trans friends over to meet your parents because you'd want to be protecting your trans friends in case of any mayhem. Yeah, there'd be that, but also it would just be completely embarrassing. Mm. It'd be like if you, I don't know, if you invited some friend over who got ripping drunk and was obnoxious or something, and you'd feel embarrassed about other people who are at your party or, or something okay because it would, it would reflect badly on you i suppose well you would, would no it would, i know where you're coming from yeah. i yeah uh, i don't personally feel that way because my my parents were in your parents position i would i would say oh, i'm sorry my parents are being idiots <laughs> but only if it had been you know a couple of years of them being idiots i mean that's the other thing is that i've realized that i came out to my parents Around Thanksgiving 2010. Yeah. So it's been over four years now. Right. My my parents always have this canard about like, you want all this so soon or something like that. Like I'm being greedy about huh. my uh, the things I ask of them. That, that might just be empty words of them trying to get me off their back. You could you could film an entire Lord of the Rings trilogy in four years. Yeah, you totally could. Uh-huh. I mean, 
you could graduate high school in four years. Mm, that's a lot of learning. Yes. Uh huh. And my parents just have this one lesson to get through. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And it's not like I don't know if this would be to the level of like writing a letter to them of like, dear mom and dad, it I don't like it when you use wrong pronouns for me when I'm out of the room. Telling them in print that they're doing something that upsets you. It seems like that hasn't helped. I, well, for instance, there was the letter I had written to them about how um, when they would use my old name around friends of mine, um, this was maybe a year after I'd come out to them, where I had some people over for like a barbecue, I think. And they would just use my old name and stuff. And mm. so I mean that I, I had invited like four people, say, and I think two or three people I was out to. But one of the persons was someone I just met through mutual friend like a month ago or something. My parents like, oh, uh, would you like another glass of wine birth name or yeah. whatever? And it's just like, that was that was just mortifying. But I mean, and that's one of the things I mentioned in one of my letters, that whole uh, anecdote and how I felt about that. And so that's when they s started calling me Snooks all the time. I mean, which is something I later had to write a, a second letter about, but at least it was something. It seems like you'd be even happier with What's-Her-Face. Yes. Yeah. Because at least I would have the, the pretense of absent-mindedness or something. Because, I mean, I agree, like, that nonsense when my mom's telling some anecdote, it's like, and then my oldest child said, burr, 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 burr. I think we're just gonna have to put a horse head in their bed. <laughs> that would, that would, that would do something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But well, what you gonna do about it? I think one thing maybe I could do would be to, for instance, when I'm next visiting them and that happens, then to bring it up with them. I mean, I guess part of what is a slightly complicated factor is just that the, the house my parents have in Charlotte, it's sort of a, it's not quite an open floor plan, but there's a lot of rooms that connect to each other. So the mm. sound carries. Mm. So it's not hard to necessarily hear things when they're in the other room. Yeah. But having said that, if I come in and say like, oh, I, I just heard you say he, it should be she. I don't know if they would get, uh, their socks in a bunch because they thought I was like over hearing them or eavesdropping or something. Although it's kind of here, near here or there. No, but... they live there. They know how the sound carries. Yeah, it's possible. Although my dad is also deaf in one ear. Oh. Yeah. What's the worst case scenario of them getting their socks in a bunch? They could get on a tangent. It gets sidetracked. Like, mm -hmm. well, you shouldn't have been eavesdropping. How, how could you do that to us? Or, you know nonsense like that mm. and then just derail the conversation is it hard to get them back on track with a particular topic yeah sometimes they just have uh, like a mind of their own of like what conversations they want to have or, or mm -hmm. whatever i mean and my dad is someone who he he will interrupt people um not maliciously but if someone's telling a story and my dad has a question about the story he would just blurt it out rather than waiting to like a lull in the story. Oh. Just in, in that sense, if my parents are having some conversation and then I walk in and bring it up, I can see me just be like, ah, eh, or her on for something and then just going right ahead with the rest of their conversation. Well, I suppose if you wanted to, you could practice with other people and just make it a sort of game for yourself to remember what the original topic was and then try to loop back around once a tangent is over. That might work, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm plenty familiar with how, how tangents and conversations work. Usually I let them go because the first topic was never important in the first place. Yeah, and I totally agree. Like, if you're just having chit-chat at a party mm -hmm. and there's some tangent, I mean, it's totally fine. It's, it's not a big deal. But I wonder if it's that they don't know how much this means to me or if they do, but don't care anyway. I would, I don't know for sure. I would guess that their stubbornness is 
keeping them from noticing that it means a lot to you. That Yeah, that may be it. Yeah. Also, I don't see your face or body language when it happens because I'm not visiting them with you, but maybe you have a little bit of that stoicness also, and so they wouldn't notice unless you burst yeah. into tears or something. It could be, or if it's just like if um, if the three of us were talking in the living room, and if my dad was saying to my mom about, oh, his flight's at one o'clock tomorrow or whatever, like my dad would be mostly looking at my mom while he was saying that. Mm -hmm. And if I give him some scrunchy face, in addition to saying something, he might not notice the scrunchy face. You probably would notice if you threw a Nerf ball at him, though. Probably, yeah. And there's almost no chance that would end up injuring him. That's true, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to carry Nerf balls in my pocket. I'm grasping at straws because I want you to feel better about it. Well, thank you, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid, stubborn people. One of the things that, um, when I brought this up at the the group, the group session I go to, uh, one of the other women there mentioned, well... And she'd brought up about how my parents still have like old pictures of me around. Mm. And which itself is. Oh, not yeah. Helping. We talked about that. and Right. Right. And so um, this other woman, she she brought up the, the idea possibly that if, the, if they have all these old pictures of me around the house, maybe that's what they see all the time. And that's what's the mental image is being reinforced for them. Yeah. Did you talk to them about those in December? I, I didn't quite muster the courage to talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. Did you draw a little, um, did you, did you draw lipstick on the pictures of old you? <laughs> that would have been hilarious, but no, yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. One of the things I did notice even was that, um, uh, in the, in the TV room, my parents have like a bookshelf on one wall and it's mostly filled with picture frames on the different shelves. And I think it was last December I noticed that I think it was my high school graduation picture was sitting in a frame on there, an 8 by 10 thing. And so I think last year I um, just quietly kind of took it off the shelf and slotted it next to one of the books on an adjacent bookshelf. Okay. And I kind of adjusted some of the pictures so that there wouldn't be like a gap in the bookshelf. Yeah. But I noticed it was back up when I came to visit in December. I wonder if, if if maybe you had hidden it more securely. Maybe. I don't I would just rather not I would just rather just be out with it. I don't I don't want to be sneaking around on it. Right, right. Were there other loose threads from the last time we talked that I forgot to bring up because I'm bad at this? Those are probably the main things. Mm. Um I've recently started uh a voice coaching thing. Oh, say more words. A lot of trans women go through, well, many, uh, get help with voice coaching and so on for pitch and resonance and all that kind of stuff. And that's something where if you can find someone local, that's great because you can be in person and all that kind of thing. And I did have ostensibly a couple of voice lessons with someone in Frisco, which is sort of a suburb a bit north of here. That was in, like in three or four years ago. But yeah. It turns out that this person I went to, she was not actually very good. Okay. Um, she was a singing coach who figured, oh, I can make a couple extra bucks if I branch out into this trans uh -huh. voice thing. And okay. some of the concepts may have sort of translated, but there's a lot that seemed to fall to the cracks. Okay. So, it, so sort of the way I think of it is that I haven't really had voice coaching. It's, I, it's mostly been just trial and error, Mm -hmm. Working on that by myself, that sort of thing. And there weren't other voice coaches in the area either. So for quite a while, I was just like kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a, an, a woman who works over the internet, uh, Kathy Perez, and she does online voice coaching. Okay. Yeah. And it so happens that uh, among a local trans group, they got sort of a group deal where... Like if, I don't know, I think it was 15 people signed up or something, it would include like, well, I won't say a one-on-one -on -one session because it wouldn't be one trans person and 
Kathy, but mm -hmm. it would be like in a, a group session, uh, sort of a video coaching thing. Does that, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. So, so included, I think, three of those and some video-based lessons and stuff. So um, there are, I think, five chapters in the course or whatever, and I think I'm on the second one. Hmm. And, uh, I mean, there are some decent tips in there. It's the kind of thing where I think Kathy also has a more advanced course, which is the one I might normally lean towards since just from practicing my own, I don't think I'm terribly bad at it. Mm. But she requires her beginner's course as a prerequisite. Sure. And I also figured that since I'm mostly self-taught with this, that, I mean, maybe there'd be a few things I pick up along the way. Okay. Yeah. Over the last few years, have you not had friends who you want to, quote unquote, bounce ideas off of in terms of how your voice sounds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I've had friends tell me that my voice sounds pretty good. Um, okay. The tough thing is that, let's say, hypothetically, it was 90% good. It's it's sometimes hard to know what the other 10% is. Okay. Like, yeah. how, how that might be fixed. Yeah. Um, for what it's worth, about 15 minutes into talking with you today, I did notice that you were staying on pitch more consistently. Okay, yay. Today. Uh, is this something that you have to always be thinking about when you're talking? I think it's it's like a muscle memory, like for an athlete. of For, say, a pole vaulter, where I'm sure the first several times there's a lot of thinking and so on, or maybe someone doing a golf swing or what have you. But after enough practice, the idea is that it just becomes second nature. Hmm. And I wouldn't say that I'm at either end of that, but hopefully more on one side than the other. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the practice helps. And um, another part of some of the practice exercises that she has is I think it also helps strengthen some of your vocal muscles and so on, mm. which... Uh, as I would guess, would make it easier then to it should. stay on pitch and that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 So this course runs through, I think, end of February, I think. So I'll see how that goes. Are there certain women that you want to model your voice after? The tough part is that there are some physical limitations in a sense that... Yeah. Part of what voice coaching plays off of is the science that there's sort of a general range for male voices and a, an overall range for female voices. Mm. And there is some small overlap sort of in the middle there. And so if you can get sort of into that overlap or a bit past it, you can... So for instance, my speaking voice might not be at the high end or of... Uh, what how women hmm. speak mm -hmm. but if i can be like a third of the way or half of the way through the average span of it i mean that would i'd be good with that okay so all that's to say that i mean there's some voices I, i'd like and so on but that might might not be physically possible to be on pitch yeah is there a word for the quality of a woman's voice that is not related to pitch that is there's resonance Resonance, maybe that's it. Resonance is sort of the reverberation within your lungs, kind of. Yeah, there's there's that weird quality, and maybe it's resonance that makes a woman sound like a woman, uh, even if you're Kathleen Turner. Or and they're just Marilyn little Monroe. things like um, the way women's voices are not necessarily physically, in a sense, but just the way women are socialized of pronunciation or oh yes yeah. some women have sort of a, a sing-song quality of going th through talky bits mm. talking <laughs> <laughs> going through talky bits and i mean or some women have vocal fry um which some people find obnoxious i actually f wouldn't mind having a little bit of vocal fry men can do that too don't they you're talking men? about um uh that yes uh, right thing there yeah yeah. But to do that and have and be on pitch is tough for me. And indeed, I mean, I've. Do you sing in the shower, Ashley? Sometimes. You sing in the car? 
Not usually. Because oftentimes, most of the time in the car, I'm listening to podcasts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've run out of things to ask you. Okay. Do you want me to show you something curly? Something late? Wait, ladylike? What's yeah, the... Yeah, Ashley, why don't you show me something ladylike? Okay, sure. Okay. I... You jammies. It's nail polish. Hi, cool. I know. So this is... I like the blue one. Okay, yeah, the blue one's pretty nice. Yeah, this one's actually a top coat anyway. But oh. And this green one is the one I was actually wearing on the last show, mm -hmm. which is called Style Maker, which sort of sounds like an Adobe product from the 90s. <laughs> but uh, these are from Sally Hansen's Miracle Gel line. Oh, what's and, the miracle? Well, the idea, okay, so you're familiar with like gel nails, just regular yeah, gel nails? I think so. Where they cure with UV light and they're yeah. like wicked durable. You can wear them for like two weeks and they'll be mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. So the idea with, um, there are some home gel kits where it's the same idea. You get a, like a little home UV contraption thing and then that kind of thing. With these ones from Sally Hansen, these um, don't require a lamp. They don't require a UV lamp. What? It's a miracle. I know. The strength in them comes from the various color codes bonding to the top coat and bonding to each other. But then also, the you'll notice that this this looks like it's a black bottle. I yeah. mean, and it is. But <laughs> if I open it, you can see it's clear. Yeah. And that's because this is light sensitive. When it's exposed to UV light, it gradually hardens and cures. So the idea with these is that even if you paint your nails at night, when you go out to the store the next day and just, you know, being outside and stuff, the exposure to, you know, the sun mm -hmm. will help strengthen your nails. That's cool. It is pretty cool. It does last a bit longer than regular nail polish. I'll say that much. I mean, okay. but with a regular gel nail, it'll last like two weeks without a lot of trouble. These might last closer to a week, maybe a little bit less. No, oh, well, that, that's how does that compare to non gel nail polish? That's like two extra days. It's like, yeah, it's about an extra day or two. Hmm. Yeah. Depending on how rough you are with them. Okay. It's not like there's no free lunch here. It's not like, oh, there's no lamp and you get all these super hard nails and they're invincible, yeah. which would be super nice. But it it is a bit more durable, but it's not the same as regular gel nails. Okay. So uh, I looked up the price for these just to check. These go for eight bucks about for the top coat. And you need a special top coat. That's uh, Yeah. And you can get them at Target. You can get them at Ulta, get drugstores. So you don't have to go to like a fancy store for them. Oh, and another thing I can mention with these is that they don't require a base coat. Hey. I mean, and normally cores you... That sounds like time saving. It is kind of... It can save some time. Yeah. Yeah. And normally you would use a base coat because otherwise your nail polish might stain your nails. Not to mention that um, having a base coat can help adhere your polish to your nails. But in this case, I gather that those two things are not an issue. That hmm. perhaps it... Uh, doesn't stain your nails. I mean, heck, I used it and it didn't. Um, so, I mean, that is one factor there. So, yeah. you're going to keep using it? Um, I think so. I mean, the. Are you going to have to use your other 130 bottles of normal nail polish first? <laughs> well, I mean, nail polish, it's like shoes where, you know, you get this one, like, oh, this will work with this outfit, or this one's pretty and I don't have an outfit for it yet. Yeah. Or they just kind of, they're sort of like pretty triples. They just kind of like <laughs> go up and then, you know. So I'm still going to keep using my regular polish. But the thing with these, though, is that, of course, for the system to work, you have to buy the, the Miracle Gel brand polish and, yes. of course, the Miracle Gel brand top. So okay. um, the top, I mean, this will work with any of the Miracle Gel colors, but there are only so many of them. Like, because oh. it's a fairly new line, there might be 16 or something like that. Hmm. It's um the the color selection is not perfect, but I mean that's the case with any sure. gel color. What other jobby? Yep. This it guy is a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. This is a nail polish correcting pen. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Now okay. earlier you were using little wooden sticks for that. Yes, orange sticks. Mm -hmm. And 
orange sticks are still they're still a handy thing because for one thing if you've got a big glop of polish off on your cuticle the pen's not going to do a lot for that okay but if you just have a bit of overpaint this thing's actually rather handy come on open oh what's nice about it and this is probably true for many correcting pens this isn't the only brand but it's got a nice little tapered tip so you can really get a very fine point of where you want to tidy up the things. Now describe an example of tidying up. Generally, you want to get all the way back to the cuticle and then down the sides. And if you leave gaps there, it will look janky. Mm. So unless you're a perfect nail polish applier, you'll usually get a teensy bit just like on your cuticles on the side or on the tops. The next day and next morning in the shower, you can just rub those bits under the hot water and those, those will come off. Okay. So that's usually the way I go. But what if you say you chip your nail on a Thursday or something and you go out with friends that evening? Well, you can you can paint that and fix it, but it might you might not have a shower in between. And so that's where this guy can come in handy. You can just beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. But what does yeah. it do? Okay, so it is filled with basically a nail polish remover. And it's just got a felt tip on it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's a whiteout pen. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, and this one actually has a non acetone based nail polish remover. Mm -hmm. And it, it works totally fine. I've never had any issues with it. Um, I've heard that some people don't like the the, the, the smell of acetone, so that could mm. be a feature for some people. I actually find the smell of acetone kind of soothing, but that's probably just, you know, association with... Yeah, sure. Know. Right. Some women like the smell of gasoline. My mom does. She yeah. thinks... It's, I'm like, really? God. <sighs> kind of gross. I know. It smells like a refinery. Mm. Or Anyway. So this one, and that's the cap. This is yeah. the, I guess, the butt end of it. Uh, it's got some alternate tips on it so that oh. if the thing ever gets gunked up with polish, then you can swap it out. That's pretty thoughtful. Yeah, because it's conceivable, for instance, that if you so you had a red polish one week and then you did a little touch up this and then next week you had maybe sort of a brownish polish that, I mean, because this thing's filled with nail polish remover, that it's not like the polish would necessarily try, that it could sort of be little streaks of red in there theoretically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if you just use it a whole lot on over time yeah Great. so having the extra tips is a nice thing um the company's called nails inc it's called uh corrector pen and it goes for about 11 bucks at ulta you may also be able to get it on amazon and stuff but that's mm -hmm. just one place for it and it's pink which is nice okay well, yeah. what are you going to do with the rest of your life? <laughs> the rest of my life? I think maybe two surgeries left, like bottom surgery and then top surgery. You want larger breasts? Or are we talking about something else? No, yeah, yeah. I only have, like, I'm a small B. I generally wear push-up bras, like, mm. all the time, because that's the only way I can get, like, anything out of it. Have you tried a corset? Okay, I I don't have a corset yet. But it's something I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I don't want to buy a shitty corset. No, you don't. I want to get one that's not just like plastic and whatever else they, no, they make yeah. them up. You want yeah. whalebone. Or, but an old one. Or so maybe you don't feel bad about the dead whale. <laughs> or maybe steel or something. Do they do steel boning now? Oh, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. So I so part of it's like, okay. Hey, listeners, if you know of a good place to get a corset, I'd be open to it because I don't want just some like cheap ass corset from China mm -hmm. or, you know, it doesn't have to be like hand woven with, with silk or whatever nonsense. But I just want something that's going to be decent quality okay. because I figure I'd rather pay a little more, get something nicer rather than just something that's junk and it's going to fall apart. Yeah. But yes, I'm also still planning. What is your ideal bust size? Given that I'm five foot nine, which is tall for a woman, I'm thinking maybe 
large C or small D. Okay. I definitely do not want to get any bigger than that because then you can't find bras. I mean, you can, but uh, not at like regular stores all the oh, time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because usually around D or double D or so, it's like trying to find shoes larger than 11. Mm. Like you just have to buy online huh. or okay. some specialty store. I, I plan on doing that as the last one, and but doing next bottom surgery. Yeah. Okay. But I need to be able to save some money for that part. And yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe the audience wants to help you. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's a and, GoFundMe. I mean, there's no way to know for sure about job stuff, but I, I've i got this a decent feeling about this company. I, I mean, who knows if they'll hire me, but they yeah. they did there don't seem to be assholes so okay that's good that's <laughs> yeah really important. i know they're they're the kind of company where if they were to offer me a job i would accept it not only because i need to buy groceries but also because they seem generally decent awesome i mean no company is perfect but no. you know best of luck thanks jay yeah have a nice january and we'll talk soon bye bye bye, bye.